Hey everyone, this is Doug with b &H. I've got here with me the BenQ SW321C monitor. It's a gorgeous 4K monitor aimed specifically at photo, graphic, and video professionals. With 99% Adobe RGB and 95% P3 gamut coverage, and with support for hardware calibration, this is a seriously capable monitor intended for professionals who need precise, accurate color. There's a lot of tools, settings, and use cases to go through here, so let's just dive right in. Built around a 3840 by 2160 IPS panel running at 60 hertz, this is a sharp, vibrant display that puts color accuracy above all else. Don't expect things like ultra-high refresh rates or adaptive sync here. Every tool and accessory is in the service of better color reproduction. The big feature here, of course, is the monitor's hardware calibration support, which uses an internal 16-bit 3D LUT to produce superb, consistent color, and most importantly, even when you're detached from a computer. Now, like I said before, there's a wide gamut here, with 99% of Adobe RGB space and 95% of P3 space covered, letting the SW320NC excel in graphics workflows that need much wider color gamuts. The extreme color uniformity here also helps in getting consistent results across the monitor from edge to edge. We'll cover the calibration and color spaces, though, in just a moment. Another fascinating feature for this monitor is its paper color sync function, which matches the monitor to the paper type you're printing to. This allows you to do final adjustments of your image on a screen that much more closely resembles your desired print, based on the paper and the printer type. Lastly, as far as main specs are concerned, there's also tons of video inputs here, including DisplayPort, two HDMI ports, USB-C, and an SDXC card reader, so you've got yourself covered on almost any graphics output. So what we're mainly going to demo today is the hardware calibration. This is probably the most important thing you can do with any monitor, but the ability to store the calibration in the monitor itself makes it invaluable in a professional setting. Using a device like the Calibrite Color Checker Display Pro, I have the older X-Rite i1 display version here, you can attach it via USB to the monitor and slink the device through the opening on the shading hood. By the way, as I'm sure you can see, I don't have the hood on right now. First, let's load up the Palette Master Elements software, though. This is BenQ's software to guide the calibration process, but it does require a separate hardware device like the one I just mentioned. Calibration is pretty simple. Select the monitor, calibration device, which both should already be done, and if you want to go through a basic or advanced process. I like to go advanced, so we'll start by choosing which color space we want, followed by the white point and the luminance. In my case, at least, I try to stick with a 120-nit luminance, as that's generally recommended for video, but those in brighter, less controlled environments might want to go a little bit higher. Those who do a lot of printing will almost certainly want to use a lower luminance setting, which you can more precisely choose in the advanced workflow. Next up, you choose which calibration preset this will be assigned to, along with the profile type. We'll choose 16-bit LUT here, and also increase the patch size to large to get the most thorough reading we can. Hit start measurement, and the calibrator will initialize. The screen will cycle through the entire color patch and adjust brightness and contrast automatically as it progresses through the calibration. The calibration process usually doesn't take too long, about 15 to 20 minutes or so, and the monitor will let you know when you should recalibrate to maintain consistent results. You can store up to three different custom calibrations, which is great if you want to use the monitor for both photo and video work, for example. Your calibrations can then be selected either through the monitor menu itself or with the assistance of the Quick Puck, which connects directly to the monitor and can switch between calibrations even faster. There's far more to color here than just the calibration options, however. Color selection is primarily done through the color mode option in the menus, and the calibrations aside, it's ideal to start here because all the subsequent settings are chosen for you. For example, you'll see the monitor has two P3 modes. One is for display P3, and one is for DCI P3. Now, DCI P3 is the cinema standard, and so what you'll get is a much dimmer preset. Brightness on the DCI version of the preset is all the way down to 10, and gamma is cranked to 2.6. Compare that to the display P3 preset, which gives you an sRGB gamma setting, presumably 2.2, and full brightness, 100. The gamut is, of course, still P3, though. 
Presets are useful to get a quick approximation of a given color space, but for professional results, you should still use a custom calibration. Still, in a pinch, if you don't have calibration hardware, the color mode presets could be useful. Photographers will get the most out of the Adobe RGB support here. The monitor, I'll say it again, supports 99% of the Adobe RGB gamut, making it a prime candidate for photo editing work. The standard sRGB gamut mode is here as well, of course, but as basic as it is, it's important not to discount sRGB even nowadays. For web content in particular, not broadcast TV, there is an argument to be made for working strictly in an sRGB space rather than Rec. 709, which is what some people might expect. Regardless, if you do move down to Rec. 709, you can set the monitor for broadcast environment, which, if you calibrate it, is completely apart from a computer. Now, since we discussed P3 just a moment ago, let's talk about the 709 and DCI-P3 modes. The SW321C can store its calibrations in hardware, so when using modes like 709 and DCI-P3 for, say, color grading work, they should be utilized entirely on their own, preferably through some kind of video monitoring device. This is for two reasons. One is that you want to ensure the computer is not altering the image in any way. But the second reason is actually that with the broadcast and theatrical color modes, the resulting images are quite dim, and when it comes to using application UIs, for example, it's just not going to work. But going back to the color modes available here, there's a black and white mode, mbook mode as it's called, DICOM, paper color sync mode, three custom calibrations, and a completely manual custom mode as well. The SW321C is, as it says in the name, a 32-inch monitor, which is of course a diagonal measurement. Being a professional monitor, however, means it's heftier than other monitors of its size. The color processing, the lighting, input, outputs, and of course the general heat dissipation add to the height, weight, and depth of the display. With the shading hood and stand, you're looking at 13.2 kilograms or 29.1 pounds. The shading hood does add quite a bit to the monitor's footprint too, so those with limited desk space should keep that in mind, but when it comes to color critical work, it's something you'll really want to keep attached. Personally, I can't go without them anymore. But beyond dimensions, the build quality is spectacular, especially in the base. It needs to be, given the size of the monitor, but you also have a lot of flexibility here. The SW321C can, for instance, switch into vertical orientation. You can also tilt and pivot the monitor on multiple axes, and the wire clutter can be routed through the hole in the main arm. The quick puck even sits right at the center of the base. Inputs are generous here with DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, and USB-C inputs, which all support 4K video at 60Hz. Now on the side are multiple USB Type-A connections that act as a hub from the monitor's main USB connection. There's also an SDXC card reader on the side as well, adding more to the monitor's photo credentials. I love this monitor. I mean, just look at it. Once you have professional-level screen uniformity and calibration options, it's hard to go back. It's also hard to find another option in this price range that has as many features as it does. While I didn't get to test the paper color sync feature here, I'm sure that that would be a huge benefit to photographers who create their own prints. And for those of us who need to deliver accurate color for both web and broadcast content, the internal calibrations are a game changer. So that's it for the BenQ SW321C monitor. I'm Doug with BNH, and I'll see you next time.